Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habita fillah This address is addressed to Hamza al-Majhul Al-Majhul meaning unknown who claims Salafiyah, but many of his claims and inadequate attacks upon my character show a lack of learning and thick in the deen. Likewise, he goes by this name and posts fake claims and inferences on the internet, which shows he differs with some of our scholars and some of the very scholars he claims to follow who speak against this, like Sheikh Ubaid and Sheikh uh, Rabi' and other than them. First, I want to lay down a few foundation principles. Uh, I attempt to emphasize, even though Hamza claims to the contrary, the usul of Ahl Sunnah when dealing with evidences and dealing with refutations and dealing with uh, matters in the deen, contrary to what uh, Hamza says, as our Sheikh Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Allah yarhamahu, so eloquently spoke when he said, Da'wa to Ahlu Sunnah, Da'wa tun min kitabillah ila kitabillah, wa min sunnati Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam ila sunnati Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. I begin here, and as our Sheikh said, Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. So the Dawah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is from the Book of Allah to the Book of Allah, and from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Meaning, not to ourselves, not to personalities, not to cliques, not to uh, understandings which are not based upon the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. So I begin here because when observing Hamza's claim against me, I notice no reference to the Book of Allah, meaning no ayat, or the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the total absence of what is called Sharia evidence. Sharia evidence is what? It's based on four things primarily. First, the Book of Allah, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Secondly Thirdly Al-Ijma Meaning the consensus of the ulama of a particular asr, a particular time And fourthly, as some of the ulama mention uh, Aqiyas As-Sahih Meaning sound analogy between uh, analogous issues This is what is considered what? Dalil or evidence in the shirk Because he made it seem as if he was bringing so much evidence He didn't mention one ayat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he didn't mention one hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wala juz minho not even a portion of a hadith nor did he mention anything uh, relating to the ijma nor did he mention he made uh, perhaps some sort of qiyas or a lot of inferences we found that he made wallahu musta'an why am I responding you may ask Meaning, why am I addressing this? Why am I even wasting time? Because, of course, it took time to prepare this. It took time away from my regular durus, time away from my life. First, because my honor has been uh, trampled on by this brother. May Allah guide us in him. That he took the time and had time throughout the day. Maybe he's a student, so he doesn't work, or I don't know what his situation. But where he could sit on the Internet and make uh, all of these claims and write up and... and and try to bring shubahat, try to bring doubtful things, instead of advising if that was were the case. So my honor has been uh, attacked. And those were one of the things that are sacred in the shara. They're from the maqasid of sharia. They're from the, uh, the things that the sharia protects. Secondly, his claims distort the da'wah of Ahl-Sunnah. Because so many of the youth 
are confused by these types of attacks that have been taking place for years and years and years that people have used to call into doubt the uh, the people giving dawah and those students of knowledge and even the ulama that even the ulama are not safe from the speech of individuals like this and the Prophet said you will follow the way of those who came before you now this the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as in the full hadith let tattabi'oon as sunnah min kana qablakum hudwa al-qudhati bil-qudh hatta lo dakhalu juhra al-dhab la dakhultamuhu qalu ya rasulullah al-yahud wa nasara qala faman so the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said you would follow the nations of those people who came before you uh, arm span by arm span or hand span by hand span until they entered the hole of a bub and a bub is a, a lizard that we have here very common in Saudi Arabia, Arabia. Uh, until you entered the hole of a bub you would enter it meaning you would follow them you would you would be more haris more severe in trying to follow their way instead of the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you would follow them so this shows us taqlid of the earlier nations likewise I'm making istilal of this hadith using this hadith as evidence that there are many people who traverse this path so we're not new to these kind of attacks and that hopefully uh, there will be this will be a source of guidance for people and not misguidance Wallahu musta'an and mentioning that as the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith like the juhr al dhab it is a the whole of this particular lizard this lizard when they hunt this lizard here they use uh, water they have to uh, put water in its hole because its hole it lives in a cavernous hole so it's not like a straight den like you would of a fox's den or something like this that means it, the water has to go and flush out the bum and then when he feels like he's drowning or something he pulls his head out they catch it by the head and then they kill it and 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 do it and cook it or they use uh, the pickup trucks and they smoke them out with the exhaust showing us the difficulty it is to reach this dub but that our nation the Prophet Sallallahu made this uh, analogy letting us know that our nation would follow those other nations very strictly and likewise some of the people follow Ahl al-Dalal because it's already been the, the bid of the Khawarij, the bid of many groups has already taken place but some of the people are Haris on following their sunnah instead of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why do I say uh, that these are minhaj issues related to this brother? Uh, for one, those claims according to Hamza's minhaj are enough to call someone ignorant and assume that they are an innovator. So we assume that with all of the claims he made, he made all of these claims, we're going to deal with them claim by claim what is most relevant from them with evidence be idnillah ta'ala and when he made his claims he also established what could potentially be looked at as false principles uh, for one which the ulama have dealt with like forcing people to take his position so he wanted me to openly declare and make uh, allegiance and make taqlid or based on the evidences that are produced in the ijtihadat of certain ulama to make tabdi' of another scholar. And I've already declared my position about that. But the point is to make ilzam of the people, which is not permissible. And this makes it a minhaj issue. And then we have to look at why would the brother single me out? Why doesn't he single out Imam Fozan? And why doesn't he make uh, ilzam of Imam Fozan who has a different opinion than him. Why is it incumbent upon me who is a, a tawailib al-ilm, meaning a small, small student? Even I, I sometimes question if I should call myself even a student. But yet you're going to make ilzam of me, but this goes against the kawai al shari and we're going to talk about that. And the third principle that he established which has been established by those before him from the group of the Hizbiyun, the many Ahzab, whether it be Ikhwan al-Muslimin, Jama'at al-Takfir wa Hijra, 
uh, and, and many of the other groups, Jamaat al-Tabliq, is that they establish al-Wala wal bara based on a position of particular scholars. And this situation is what is particularly dangerous is when you make al-Wala wal bara based on the position of some scholars of Ahl sunnah So then you try to use speech of Ahl sunnah to divide Ahl sunnah or make tibdir of other people from Ahl sunnah Incredibly dangerous. And how many of our ulama have spoken about this uh, and written books about this? And we'll mention some of them uh, as we go on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al kareem إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ وَنْ يُشْرِكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ Verily, Allah does not forgive shirk, but He forgives other than that for whomsoever He pleases. This is to let us know that what? That all of us have sins. That all of us, uh, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the sin if you come back to Him. But the point being here, the use of this ayah is a show that we all make mistakes. I'm not free from mistakes. Our ulama are not free from mistakes. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kulu ibn Adam khatta wa khayran khatayin tawabun. All the children of Adam make mistakes or they sin. And the best of those who sin or make mistakes are the tawabun, are those who make repentance to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said as related in Rawda ta'uqala wa dhannu bi ikhwanikum khayran in sadarat minhu ba'da zalat So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa radiallahu ta'ala anhu ma'ajma'in the sahaba he said he said have good uh Outlook towards your brothers or be positive or not pessimistic towards your brothers That if a if he has a mistake or if they have some mistakes or a some mistake that, that they make uh, Even if it's some mistakes that they make this is the, the meaning so Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu let us know that from the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa khulafa rashidin which were ordered to follow. The Prophet ﷺ said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati wa khulafa rashidin al mahdiin It's upon you, my sunnah and the rightly guided khulafa uh, rashidin Meaning men. This means Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, wa Ali, radiyallahu tal'anum ajma'in. So we're ordered to follow their sunnah. What was from their sunnah? Husnudhan is having good thought about their brothers. And what? even if their brother makes a mistake. So letting, you, letting us know that this is a qa'idah for us because if someone from Ahl Sunnah makes mistakes, then there's a certain way that we, we deal with that individual versus someone whose usul is mabniyatun uh, ala bid'ah. That their usul, their foundation is on bid'ah. For example, uh, someone, uh, a big head of, of uh, Jama'at al-Tabliq, Okay, you're not going to give them necessarily the benefit of the doubt if they make a, a mistake. You're not going to say, "Oh, the brother made a mistake." You know, yes, he's a Muslim. Yes, you want good for him. Yes, you want him to make tawbah and leave the bid'ah of being with that jamaat. But you don't. He does not have the same status in covering his faults and making excuses for him and maintaining respect for him that you would if it was some from, someone from Ahl Sunnah that is known their usul is your usul is the usul based on the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and we'll talk about some of those details uh, when the time comes so then the point being if I was mistaken but as we'll show about his claims that they're false Wallah Musta'an if I was mistaken why go public first when you can see I'm open to advice. Anyone who knows me or anyone who uh, listens to the lectures that I do will know that I'm pretty easygoing and that whenever I make a mistake and someone points that out, I try to rush to correct it. For example, if I make a mistake in a hadith and someone puts that in a comment or sends me an email or a mistake in an ayah, we correct it. 
or whatever the case may be. So if you are sincere, I assume you want one of two things, to advise me from sinfulness or to protect from, my, from the potential harm that I could pose to the community. These are some of the reasons why we warn, against the, uh, warn from the mistakes of individuals or we warn against Ahla Bida or whatever the case may be is in order to uh, protect the community. And likewise, if it is your brother deserving of ad advice, then you should advise them. Some of the points regarding advice is one is that in order uh, that we should try to fix the mistake by clarifying the ruling. So instead of attacking someone's uh, character or attacking their whatever, some sifat of them, some, some characteristics that they possess or their attributes, we should try to fix the mistake by clarifying the ruling. Uh, secondly, we should advise the person who is mistaken by returning them to what? What did uh, Brother Hamza fail to do? By returning them to Sharia evidence. And we already mentioned what evidence is. The Prophet uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So if you differ over something, return it to Allah and His Messenger. If you believe in Allah and His Messenger. So this lets us know what? That when we have differences, we return it to the book and the sunnah. And this is what the Prophet said, You're going back to the Sunnah. It's upon you, my Sunnah, and the rightly guided uh, Khalifa. So these Nusus, uh, these texts from the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam show us we should go back to evidence, not just aqwal of the ulama and selective statements of the ulama in order to. Uh, belittle someone that our intention has to be sahih now I can't judge the heart of this individual but I can judge from the vahir because Ahlul Sunnah yahkum ala vahir Ahlul Sunnah they look to what uh, what is apparent and what appears to be nothing less than attacks and usually attacks are either defensive or they require some intention behind them and we hope that it was a sharia based intention something of khayr so we then ask, where is your evidence? You use statement of some of the scholars and their ijtihad to make a ruling, a hukum on me, your brother, who you don't know. My name is out there. You can find my email. I don't hide behind Al-Qab. I don't have any uh, particular names, you know, Hamza as salafi or whatever. But my name is there. It's clear. But we don't know who you are. You are out in cyberspace uh, trying to make fitna. May Allah guide us in you. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. The third point with advice is correcting the view, uh, the, the correct tasawr of the mas'ala. You know, giving a, a proper picture of the issue that a particular individual is mistaken in. Those are just some of the, the issues with regards to uh, giving advice. Ahl sunnah derives evidence, as we said, from the book and the sunnah for their practices, their aqidah, and aqidah is first. Allah mentions about our purpose in life, <clears throat> our purpose that we were created, I've not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. This is what? This lets us know this is uh, uluhiyah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us our divine purpose, and we must fulfill that purpose by acts of ibadah, by acts of ibadah, tawheed, Al Uluhiya or Tawheed al Ibadah. The Prophet والسلام, said, Adin al Nasiha. The religion is sincere advice. So we should always strive our best to advise our brothers and sisters when we see that they've erred or when we even think that they've erred. Because a lot of times, as we're going to get to in the end of this uh, sitting, we'll mention some beautiful speech of uh, Ben Othimin about this. Our Sheikh uh, Abdullah, I mean Abdul Salam al Suhaimi, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he said, فَإِنَّ الْمَسْدَرَ تَلَقِي عِنْدَهُمْ 
ليس الكتاب والسنة وإنما هو ما تدعه أئمتهم وشيوخهم ثم تأويل الكتاب والسنة إلى ما يوافق أحواهم So here Sheikh uh, Abdul, uh, Abdul Salam Suhaimi was mentioning about the sifat of Ahl al-Bid'ah. So this is why I want to advise our brother to be careful that those are characteristics of the Mubtadi'een and the Hizbi'een. And what is it? It's that they, their origin for obtaining and understanding the religion is not going back directly to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but rather it is what their scholars and their imams have uh, innovated for them and their shiyukh then they make ta'wil of the book and the sunnah in order to fit their desires this is the minhaj of ahl bid'ah this is the minhaj of the hizbiyin and their various ahzab wallahu musta'an may allah protect us from this. This is why I encourage myself and my brother and all those who are listening to go back to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the understanding of the salaf. And we need the ulama, of course, to, to derive those principles. But we do not suffice ourselves, especially if someone, yantasibin al ilm that they have any relationship with knowledge, being a student of knowledge, that they, sh they must go back to the sources and they and as they progress in their knowledge they're able to look at the different aqwal and statements of the ulama to be able to analyze where their delil is coming from because they in and of themselves are not adilla as the salaf used to say la yurath al haq bi rijal walakin yurath rijal bi haq kama qil that we don't know the truth by men but we know men, by the truth, means we use the haq to judge the people. But we don't use the men to judge the people. I don't say, Sheikh so-and-so said, Sheikh so-and-so said, my Sheikh thought of it, and so-and-so said, that this, so it must be, that's it, that's the end of the story. Well, if you're at a position that you only can make taqlid, and that you have to make taqlid on many issues, then we can't uh, argue with that. We can't argue with that if that's your... That's your level. It depends. Ahl Sunnah Mutafawit, Ahl Bidah Mutafawit. Meaning, Ahl Sunnah, they have different levels. Ahl Bidah, they have different levels. So the people have different levels. Some people are from the general Muslims who uh, have different levels of knowledge. Then there are uh, some students of knowledge. And the, between the students, they have different levels. Then there are the Shuk, they have different levels. There's the Ulama Rabbaniyun, they have a, a whole other level. So everyone is in accordance with their level. And so what I say to the brother when he makes these claims, Hatu Burhanakum in Kuntum Sadaqin, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, bring your proof if you're truthful. The Prophet said, If Tarkatil Yahuda the Eta was in Firka, with Tarkat and the Sara Latinatain was in Firka, was at the Tariku Hadi Umar Talata was in Firka, Kulla have in Nala the Wahida, Kulla men here Yasullah, Kalaben Kana Alamithu Makana Ali was Habi Alion. The Prophet said, the Jews are breaking into 71 sects, Christians 72 sects, my women 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. They said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, uh, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. Letting us know our delil, what we go back to, what's going to help us to protect us from misguidance and from making false accusations is going back to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding of the salaf of this, uh, this, this ummah. The Prophet ﷺ said, The best people are those of my generation, then those follow them, then those follow them. So when this brother makes these claims that I don't, I didn't benefit in my studies, and I didn't go back to those scholars that we studied with, and I don't go back to the understanding of the Salaf, I just went back to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and gave you an athar of, uh, of Umar. So, hatu barhanakum in kuntum sadiqin. Ibn al-Qayyim says about this hadith, the hadith of uh, iftiraq, wa bil jumla fa iftiraq ahl al-kitab wa iftiraq wa iftaraka hadhi al-umma ala thalatha wa sabi'in firqa innama awjibuhu wa ta'wil. So Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentions that in general, the division of the people of the book 
and the division that will happen to this Ummah uh, into 73 sects is due to a false interpretation or misinterpretation. قال ابن أبي عز الهنفي رحمه الله تعالى وهو خارج الخوارج واعتزلت المعتزلة ورفضت الروافض وافتركت الأمة على ثلاثة وسبعين فرقة إلا بتأويل الفاسد. So uh, ابن أبي عز uh, ابن أبي عز uh, الهنفي رحمه الله تعالى said did the خوارج uh, become Khawarij and the Mu'tazila become uh, Mu'tazila and the Rafida, meaning the Rafida Shia, become Rafida uh, and divide the Ummah into 73 sects except for, uh, meaning the, the reason for this is uh, Ta'wil Fasid, in its false misinterpretation. The point here being uh, Hamza and those who force people to take their position, love who they love and hate who they hate, make uh, unsubstantiated claims against Ahl Sunnah based upon desires, an unsound interpretation of core text, and decontextualizing the statements of the ulama. All of this fa falls under this. So this shows us these are very dangerous traits, and this is a reminder to the brother to be careful. So it's very important. So what I say to this brother, do not put in my mouth, I'm attacking the Salafis, as a lot of people claim. You attack so-and-so, you're attacking the Salafis. Or the brothers. Or specifically, S-Pubs, as you mentioned. Or Troid, or Alum, or Medina.com, or whoever. Rather, anyone, I say that anyone who falls under these characteristics uh, that are unbefitting of the Salafi Dawah is who I'm calling out and specifically Hamza. If we understand that refuting an innovator is fardo kifaya, unlike the way Hamza wants it to be, everybody should involve themselves because this is the tarbiyah that the people bring to the people as they raise the, the, the general people in all of these communities which we've seen around the world with getting involved in what's your uh, mokif on Sheikh so and so, what's your position about student so and so, that making empty hand of the people when the people don't need to know this and are not involved in this, but instead we drag them into uh, this kind of fitna as a type of tarbiya. When in fact, if we understand the usul of Ahl Sunnah, we'll understand that this is an issue which is fard al kifaya, which means that as long as some of the ulama or some of the people fulfill this uh, obligation, then the sin is uh, removed from the rest of the uh, ummah. So that means not everybody needs to be involved in these issues. Not everybody is responsible for this knowledge and taking a position about so-and-so and such and such group. So it is sufficient that some of the scholars do it, uh, not all, and not all the people are responsible. And this means, of course, uh, if the ulama are fulfilling this duty, that doesn't even require then that the students of knowledge are necessarily deeply engaged in these affairs, and especially the small students of knowledge. Wallahumistaan. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Min husn al-Islam al-Mar'i, min hus, min husn al-Islam al-Mar'i, tarkuhu ma la yani, ma la yani." The Prophet ﷺ said, from the good characteristics, uh, 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 from the good Islam of a person, is that they leave that which does not concern them. So this shows us this is from Iman, by not involving ourselves in everything. And so what we understand from this uh, hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is that the uh, general Muslims are not responsible for this knowledge. Uh, secondly, that the mafhum al mukhalifa of this hadith, meaning the uh, inferred or the uh, the in the uh, the opposite meaning that can be derived from this hadith, or the uh, understanding which is derived from this hadith, is that Adam uh, Husna Islam, 
man yehold fimalayanihi. That it shows that the person who engages it in excessively involving in these affairs, meaning that they're not ahlan, we're not talking about those ulama rabbaniyun who specialize in these affairs and Allah has favored them with ilm and insight and fiqh and basira, but we're talking about people who involve themselves constantly involving themselves in tabdi'ah with tafsiq and takfir uh, that this shows a, a naqs in their Islam or in their uh, in, in their Islam and in those, those righteous characteristics so this is something we want to be careful and very cautious about and in this regard Imam Anawi said Rahimahullah Ta'ala ثم إنه إنما يأمر وينهى من كان عالم بما يأمر وينهى وذلك يختلف باختلاف شيء فإذا كان من من الواجبات الظاهرة والمحرمات المشهورة كالصلاة والصيام والزنا والخمر ونهوها فكل مسلمين علماء بهذا بها وإن كان من دقائق الأفعال وأقوال ومما يتعلق بالاجتهاد لم يكن للعوام مدخل فيه ولا لهم إنقاره بل ذلك للعلماء. So Imam Nawawi mentioned the difference between the general Muslims and those ulama who specialize in 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 uh, in these fairs. Not everyone should be involved uh, in 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 these issues of making tabdiyah. That's why we don't go around to the people and make ilzam of them forcing them to take a position. So Imam Anoa, we were just going to give a quick translation for the sake of time. He says that, you know, all the Muslims uh, can command the good and forbid the evil, but this of course depends upon the level of the things that they're dealing with. If it is some of the clearly, uh, the clear obligations like staying away from that which is impermissible and those things which are wajibat that are well known like prayer and fasting and staying away from zina and staying away from alcohol then all the Muslims can uh, understand this and they have a share in commanding the good and forbidding the evil however those very detailed and specific issues and statements and actions uh, that have a relationship with ijtihad then this is not for the general layperson and obviously not even for the small students of knowledge and, and even a lot of the students of knowledge to make inkar and involve themselves in these issues rather that is for the ulama that's what Imam Anawi Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said وَقَدْ يَنْحَوْنَ عَنَ الْمُجَادِلَ وَالْمُنَاظِرَ إِذَا كَانَ مُنَاظِرَ ضَعِيفَ الْعِلْمِ بِالْحُجَّةِ وَالْجَوَابَ الشُّبَحِ فَيُخَافْ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يُفْسِدَهُ ذَلِكَ الْمُضِلْ كَمَا يَنْهَى الضَّعِيفِ فِي الْمُقَاتِلَةِ أَنْ يُقَاتِلَ عَلْجًا قَوِيًا مِنْ عُلُوجِ الْكُفَارِ So here, yeah, Shaykh al-Islam also showing the point that everyone is, should not be involved in, these, in, in every issue. You know, this is going back to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that we men mentioned, Min husna uh, Islam al-Mari, Turkuhu ma'la yani. So, Shaykh al-Islam mentioned that uh, it has been prohibited debating and arguing, especially if the one uh, arguing or getting into debate is weak in knowledge with, and, and with evidence or with knowledge-based evidence or in dealing with shubahat in dealing with those doubtful issues and that they're afraid that they will uh, that and, and that you know that, that it's feared that uh, the person will cause more harm and be misguided that they will be ruined because they, they can't answer the shubahat so then they'll be ruined uh, similar to the way uh, the weak fighter instead we, we use uh, strong fighters in in fighting so what I say to the brother is me myself when I mentioned I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these affairs 
and I don't like to engage and indulge in them because I know that I'm not the strongest to deal with hujjah and, and barhan, you know, to have evidence, the strongest with evidence and weak in maybe dealing with some of those shubahat. So that's why I don't get into debates and argue and involve myself and involve the people that I'm trying to teach in these kind of issues, controversial issues. Let's listen to one of our contemporary ulama, Sheikh Salim bin Fozan, about this issue. He said, لا ينبغي لطلبة المبتدئين وغيرهم من العامة أن يشتغلوا بالتبديع والتفسيق لأن ذلك أمر خطير وهم ليس عندهم علم ودراية في هذا الموضوع وأيضا هذا يحدث العداوة والبغضاء بينهم فالواجب عليهم الاشتغال بطلبة العلم وكفى السنتهم أما لا فائدة فيه بل فيه مضر عليهم وعلى غيرهم. This this advice take to heart, Mr. Hamza. Sheikh Salim bin Fozan said, and this is advice for all those people who want to busy the people with things uh, affairs that are way over their head instead of taking the minhaj of the Rabbaniyun, those major scholars who start the people with by their tarbiyah with the small issues before the big issues. This is the minhaj of Rabbaniyun. So Imam Fozan said, it is not permissible for the, the beginning student uh, or other than them from the general Muslims to, uh, to, to involve themselves in making tabdeer, you know, calling people innovators, and tafsir, calling people wicked facets, because that is a dangerous or serious affair. And they do not have the knowledge and the cognizance in these, in these issues. Also, this produces enmity and hatred between them. So it is an obligation upon them to busy themselves with seeking knowledge and safeguarding and restraining their tongues on those issues which there's no benefit in. Rather, there's harm for them and for other than them. Look at this if we took this advice. How many wars do we see currently in contemporary times between the Salafi groups? Between the Salafi groups. Maktab al-Salafiyya, Medina.com, the brothers in Philly are divided, the brothers in New Jersey are divided, the brothers in France are divided, the brothers in Finland and, and the Netherlands and Ethiopia. It really doesn't matter. We don't even have to name, but the, the, the enmity and hatred between the brothers, a lot of it is because of weakness in knowledge, in fact. And it's from weak refutations from people like Hamza who like to stir up controversy and, so, and make discord and fitna. I don't, as you see, we busy ourselves with hopefully beneficial knowledge to benefit people with their daily affairs and problems they have in their lives. We go to the scholars, we teach books. Books of the Salaf, books of the Tawheed, books in Aqidah, books in Fiqh. This is what we busy ourselves with. But we don't busy with the people with things over their level to cause hatred and enmity. If I start make, endorsing this group and endorsing these brothers and endorsing this, people always take exception. And it creates more disharmony and more bagha, as Sheikh Salih bin Fozan mentioned. This is why we don't busy the general people and even ourselves with these kind of issues, Wallahum Mr.